When we think of becoming uber rich, like billionaire level rich, the only solutions are to start a company and or be a wizard investor. Even the top paid non-founder CEOs don't crack the billion dollar mark. So you wouldn't expect a guy who starts off making $50,000 a year and even at the peak of his career making only $1.3 million per year, which is great but still 769 years away from billionaire status to even make $1 billion. But Steve Ballmer was not only able to make $1 or $2 or $3 billion, but $72.8 billion, ranking as the fifth richest person in the entire world. So here's the story of how he pulled it off. Starting off, Steve Ballmer was a smart guy who attended Harvard way back in the 1970s. After getting a degree in mathematics and economics from Harvard in 1977, Steve landed a nice job at Procter & Gamble as an assistant product manager. Meanwhile, he started pursuing a business degree from Stanford, but suddenly he had a change of heart. Maybe it was the spirit of Silicon Valley or some professor at Stanford, but he decided to drop out and quit his job with Procter & Gamble and join a small startup called Microsoft in 1980. Now, Steve actually knew Bill Gates from his time at Harvard, but during his undergrad years, he didn't feel that it was necessary to drop out and pursue Microsoft. As a result, he wasn't able to claim a top-level co-founder or executive position. So, he had to settle with employee number 30. When he joined, he didn't really have a position within Microsoft as they were still a very young company and he would just help out where needed. His main tasks were to do some accounting and hire new employees. But from time to time, he would also cook and wash bottles for Bill and other executives. And for his services, Steve was offered $50,000 a year and eventually a share in Microsoft when they become public. Steve's first major contribution to the company was during Microsoft's first meeting with IBM. Before the meeting, Bill asked Steve to join him in the meeting as he had a tie and a suit and more business experience than any of the other employees at Microsoft. So Steve just tagged along for the first meeting. But this first meeting would quickly turn into several meetings with IBM and Steve would help negotiate a deal with IBM to run Microsoft software on their computers. This would be Steve's first major contribution to the company. And though he was already well liked by his colleagues, this would solidify his importance in the startup. By the time Microsoft went public in 1986, Steve would own 8% of Microsoft and this would be his ticket to billionaire status. Meanwhile, Steve was quickly working his way up in the company's hierarchy, moving up to senior vice president of sales and support, followed up by system software and vice president of marketing. After about 18 years at the company, Steve would find himself as the president of Microsoft after leading several divisions within Microsoft. At the turn of the millennium, as Bill Gates stepped down from being CEO, Steve Ballmer would actually be promoted to CEO. Now again, though he would be the CEO of Microsoft for over a decade, this is not where he would make his money. He earned a very nice $1 to $2 million per year, but generally didn't receive any stock during his time as CEO. However, through the dot-com bubble, the 8% stake he received way back in the 1980s would grow to be worth a few billion, making Steve Ballmer the second employee in the world to become a billionaire through stock options. But the good times didn't last long as the dot-com bubble burst in the early 2000s, crashing Microsoft stock. On top of this, many of the business decisions made under Steve Ballmer would unfortunately end poorly. For instance, they launched the Zune which was supposed to compete with the Apple iPod. But this was an utter flop and most people don't even know that the Zune was a thing. Similarly, the Xbox was meant to compete with Sony's PlayStation and it was actually quite successful in terms of sales and revenue. But the Xbox wasn't very successful in actually pulling in profits. And of course, there was the very controversial Skype acquisition for $8.5 billion. But at least, these were just new endeavors from Microsoft and their core business was still dominant. Well, actually, they were still very dominant in the operating system space, but this doesn't necessarily mean that people like their new operating systems. Windows Vista was met with mixed reviews, but Windows 7 was actually quite solid. And then they released Windows 8, and we all know what happened with that. 
Clearly, there were plenty of missteps under Steve's leadership, and when Steve stepped down in 2014, Microsoft stock would actually be 27% lower than when he became CEO 14 years earlier. Given the bleak outlook, Steve actually sold half his stake in 2003 after the dot-com crash. Now, don't get me wrong here, Microsoft was unbelievably profitable under Steve's leadership. But they basically failed in every single attempt to diversify and expand. As a result, when Steve left, Microsoft had basically reached its max potential, and other than their software and the Xbox, they were quite irrelevant within consumers' minds. They were simply no longer the rapidly growing tech company, thus explaining the reduction in stock value. And this is basically how they've remained for several years from the perspective of consumers. But these past few years have actually been the best years of all time for Microsoft. This is thanks to their new focus on the cloud market under Satya Nadella, which has quintupled their stock price. In fact, there are all-time highs right now with a market cap of $1.5 trillion. They've even claimed the number one spot as the most valued company in the world several times over the past year. And this is what has allowed Steve Ballmer's net worth to balloon to over $70 billion. Ironically, all of the wealth he made was literally when he was an employee under Bill Gates or after he retired as his wealth actually went down significantly during his own leadership of Microsoft. Thus, Steve Ballmer is literally the definition of in the right place at the right time. In fact, if he held on to his full 8% stake, he'd be the second richest person in the world today, ironically surpassing even Bill Gates at $120 billion. But then again, Bill would be worth $675 billion if he didn't sell any of his shares either. What do you guys think about Steve's journey to riches? Comment that down below, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.